In this video, I decided to just talk about how I see flicks after many hours of training and how I approach it for both in training and in game application. The idea for this video started because of one of the comments I got under my tweet from Valorant Range when someone mentioned that my technique seemed to differ a lot from what is common on static looking tasks in aim trainers. I'm mainly known in aim trainer community for being really good at flicking scenarios, having lots of top 1 scores under my belt. Before talking about how I started to see flicking, we need to talk about how flick technique is defined while going over some common problems that we are able to observe in players that are newer to practicing their flicks. All the new players when thinking about flicks will imagine them seeing a target on the screen and perfectly flicking to the head and getting a headshot. While that would be considered a perfect flick, we all know how hard it is to hit those type of shots consistently. While on the other hand, it might seem that our favorite pro players are hitting those shots really often. That's why we need to talk about how we can define flick technique and how visually it is trained. So as we mentioned, ideal flick would mean to just hit perfect line from crosser to the head and simply clicking upon landing. However, as we also said, it's just hard to make those shots consistent. This being said, a flick technique can be divided into two separate motions. Initial flick that covers the most distance between the crosser and the target, and microcorrection that serves as a way of simply correcting potential mistake that our initial flick could have. It may look like my flick is like one solid flick. Like my no my first flick most likely won't just be on the target because I'm doing like a flick. It just won't like automatically be there. So what happens is I like do a double flick. So like I like flick once and then I'll flick again. So So after knowing that our flick technique can be divided into two separate motions, now it's time to move on towards aim training. If you are watching this video, chances are that you already played Kovacs or aim labs while trying to improve your flicks. Let's talk about the most common problem that new up to intermediate players might run across while beginning to train their flick technique on some popular scenarios. One of the main problems that you might run across at this level is simply hovering the mouse while performing initial flicks. By hovering I mean kinda dragging the mouse towards the targets rather than actually flicking between them. This can be happening because we might be scared to flick due to lack of confidence or we are just trying to be perfect with our aim, not leaving our comfort zone. Chances are that maybe we did try speeding up our flicks, but we weren't really spending enough time fully adjusting our aim after those fast motions, causing us to miss way more, which kinda made us go back to our slow habits. We could even mention not being able to use the arm properly while performing those flick motions, as I've seen many players kinda exclusively using their wrist for all motions performed on such scenarios, which usually is just not allowing them to apply enough speed to their aim. If you're a player with problems that I just described, it's time to start trying to fix that. After learning that we might be hovering our mouse too much, first step that we should take is trying to be a bit more explosive at the beginning of our initial flick between our crosser and the target. We don't want to hover our mouse, we just want to actually flick between targets with our initial movement, so that's why it's important to push ourselves out of comfort zone. What usually will happen when you start pushing your flicks is that you will most likely start over or under flicking. Ideally, we would always want to hit our initial flick onto the target, but since it's really hard to do it consistently, we would want to prioritize either under or over flicking. Over flicking means that we are traveling more distance than is needed between our crosser and target, while under flicking means that our flick lands before the target in the same line that our motion started, which means that we are not adding up any unnecessary distance. That's why, while pushing our flicks with explosiveness, we want to prioritize under flicking in order to eliminate over flicks. Micro corrections after our fast flicks should always feel adjusted, as in not rushed, as one of the problems that players tend to have while trying to apply faster aim is just rushing all motions within their flicks. That's something that we can't do. Micro corrections should always be conscious, as in accurate. This approach to aiming while properly applied and pushed across various types of flicking can lead us to success, allowing us to secure insane spots on leaderboards as well as having nice rulings inside of the game. For instance, one of the best players in the history of static clicking, Bardos, successfully showcased this approach while being able to get top 1 scores almost on a daily basis. You can learn a bit more about his approach on his YouTube channel, so if you want to learn more about static, make sure to visit Bardos' YouTube channel. Thanks to his massive success and his video explaining the idea of performing a super fast flick and slower co correction, this approach started being kind of like a mainstream in aim community. Even to this day, we are able to see players like DT Europe successfully applying this approach actively, even with more perfection to what we were able to see from Bardos years ago. 
Now let's move on to what I was able to find out while entertaining myself while trying to push my technique beyond my own limits. So two years ago, my biggest goal within aim training was to not only hit top 1 score on popular scenario called Sixshot Ultimate, but also being the first one to break 200k points at Barvier. At that time, Bardos, so once again one of the best static clicking players of all time, had a score at around 187k, which was a top 1. Later on we could observe Vicky Cartoon being the first one ever to hit over 190k score, hitting a score of 196k. After seeing his achievement, I thought okay, it's definitely possible to get 200k. I want to be the first one to ever get it. That's how my grind started. I spent countless of hours grinding, trying to perfect the technique, constantly rewatching Bardos and Carton runs almost on a daily basis. What I was trying to do at that time is simply speeding up my initial flicks while still spending a bit more time with corrections. Pretty much pushing the so-called Bardos method, yet despite being able to get 190k plus score with some grind, I still felt really stuck with my improvement. At that time, I was thinking, is there anything else that I could do to improve myself as a static player? Is there anything beyond what Bardos described in his video? If there was, what that would be? At that time, I was feeling desperate to find out the answers. I started analyzing the technique, fast initial flick and slow microcorrection. I was repeating this process in my head all the time. At some point, I gave up on watching static VODs because I thought, okay, I watched like, way too many and people play the same way anyway. So I was thinking, okay, what categories of aiming people play in aim trainers in which they actually flick? And I was like, hmm, speed switching or evasive target switching. So that's what I did. I decided to watch speed and evasive target switching votes rather than static votes to see if I can learn something from them. So speed switching scenarios were kind of similar in their approach to what top players were doing on static anyway, as I could observe very fast and explosive flicks and micro corrections were very similar to what Bardos was doing. But after finding out what top evasive target switching players were doing, my head opened. They were not flicking as fast just to have softer landings, and this way, since they had lower tension levels, they were able to track the target more efficiently, which means that their micro corrections were way more effective. This opened my eyes. Did I just found out what Bardos' approach to flicks is lacking at? Is it possible to optimize flick technique even more? Let's find out! While Bardo's approach allowed me to decrease the distance between targets super quickly, thanks to me pushing the initial flick super hard, what usually was happening is me having to use way more tension to stop that flick before performing micro corrections. This stop usually contained a lot of shakiness, which required extra buffer time before correcting my aim. When my runs looked really fast, the time I was spending per correction were not allowing me to push myself in terms of my pacing. Clearly something that could be optimized, right? Then I thought about the other approach, slower flicks with more soft landings. This approach, while allows you to have more efficient correction upon landing, since the shakiness and tension is minimized, makes you spend way more time decreasing the distance between targets, which Bardas method was amazing at. With this discovery, I started thinking about when set approaches will apply the best. The way Bardos was aiming made so much sense to me with wide angle flicks. Using its strong point of decreasing the distance between crosser and target super quickly, even though we will have to buffer the flick a bit more, made a lot of sense to me. Because if you were to think for purely in-game situations, as when we let's say have to perform 180 in CS or Valorant, this motion most likely will have to be made super fast even though it might contain more error. While on the other hand the smooth approach, due to its strength lying mainly in microcorrection efficiency, might be better to apply it while performing flicks at short distances, because at short distance you might not need to be as fast with the flick, but you might want to be faster with the correction itself. By not using Bardo's approach, which would cause me to kinda stop myself before correcting, I could make my small flicks more efficient, and minimize the time I spent per target. In my head that was the answer. Practicing both techniques and finding a right balance between them, depending on the situation that I'm facing, both in-game or on the task that I play. Playing CS or Valorant, holding angles, I will go for a smooth approach, as in lower tension. Having to flick at medium to wide distance, I will try to play like Bardos, super fast flick and slow correction. Playing static tasks, I will do the same, wide wall, Bardos approach, six shot, smooth approach. This way, my six shot scores started clamping again. 
allowing me to finally reach my goal of hitting first 100k score ever. Funny enough, I've talked with Bardos about my findings and after explaining my ideology behind my flick technique, he was able to break down the barrier of 190k after a longer break. <laughs> 